very grey. Oh, it's very beautiful cloud. <laughs> it's quite high high altitude clouds this morning. <laughs> they're, they're very high. So where are we going? Straight back, back near the uh, the uh, on, on row. Road. Yes, we're walking down Long Row towards Springbank. We just passed the Caden Head Shop on the corner, which we'll uh, return to when it opens at 10. <laughs> we're not missing that, are we? You know where we are? Dum -de -dum -de -dum. It's funny. It's amazing just to see Springbank at the end of the street, isn't it? Hi there, good morning. Hello. <laughs> camera's, oh. camera's rolling already. <laughs> I'm guessing it's just cameras all day here, isn't it? Oh, uh, pretty much, yeah. Let's have a quick look. There's a fine cabinet. Yes. Whiskey cake, nice. <coughs> you can you can have a collection of whiskey cakes. <laughs> How much is it here? It's ten price. Oh no, it's fifty pence cheaper than the boy. <laughs> So we are the only now uh, distillery in Scotland that do 100% process on site. So that's all the way from the uh, malt barns where we get the barley. We take it through all the processes right down to the bottling hall. Mmm. Malty barn. Nice and tiny. Yeah. <laughs> all across Scotland to the other side. We take it from there because it's sustainable and high quality. We do, for those that drink Springbank, make a local barley from time to time, you know that. Um, 
We would love to use more of it, but it would just take one wet summer and a crop failure here would be catastrophic for the local community and also for ourselves. So that's why we only take the local crop when it's of a good enough quality and we're ready to take it. Other than that, it's going from the East Coast. When it comes in, it's about 15% moisture level. We need to rise that up because we're going to trick this barley into germination. If you have a look at it, this is pretty, pretty fresh and it's just gone down. You'll see at one end the roots are beginning to come out. A little bit, yeah. That's then it's called the chits. The chits are beginning to come out. And after a couple more days of this, if we left the floor unattended, mm. they would all start to dig together and it would form a massive carpet and we wouldn't be able to lift it. So we have to keep turning the floors over every four hours. We have oh, two yeah. methods in which we do this. The first I'm just about to demonstrate. Well actually what are you doing? I'm gonna oh, demonstrate. <laughs> so just bear with me a second. You can eat it. Do I hear the shark of people on the tail? Yeah. Oh, oh love that. I just did some money then. How's it doing? Yeah, do you want to do it, madam? That's it. That's <laughs> going on that side. Don't worry about walking on it. That's fine. Just walk on it. It's just fine. walk on it. Okay. Just <laughs> like riding. Come on, madam. Just like riding a bike. You can get on the back of the bike first. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Right, just pull, just pull, and just pull. So, as you can see, the lady is demonstrating. She does very well, she's got a job on Monday. So she's <laughs> lifting it up and she's separating it out. Uh, scraping along the floor and it's lifting everything off the floor, up and pushing it away. Because what <laughs> happens is, underneath, this is just like a continental quilt. It's cool to the top of the surface. Okay, turn around, madam. Well, get the job. <laughs> What four hours it'll be done with the grubber, next four hours it'll be done with the turner. And that's what we do. This was last done around eight or nine o'clock this morning. And you can tell by the way that it looks like a beach, it was done by this mm, machine. Right. Everything on this floor is gathered together, no machinery used, it's all done by hand. Brushes, shovels, wheelbarrows, it all goes down there. Down there, there is um, a bucket system. There's a chain of buckets and they're going to catch all the barley and take it up. All the way up, because this here, at the back, is an elevator. It's going to take it away because now we're tricked into that, that stage of germination where it's full of starches and sugars. We're now going to trap it. And the way that we trap it is that we put heat through it, toast it in, in, in essence. We call it malting, the malting process. And that's what we're going to go on and look at next. And sir. Which type of barley is this? We are currently using, we're going to say concerto. Concerto, okay. It be lorry. I'll come back to you. That's right. It's one or the other. I think it's concerto. So, any other questions? We did change. Anyway, <laughs> so here we are on the back. Oh, this is production staff. So the story behind that is I am the cheeky toe guy, and I'm cheeky to the production staff. This is what's going to happen to the next cheeky toe guy if I carry on. So the first one here, we will call this the rusty, crusty condenser. There you go, that's the first one. Easy. Condenser. When I say just across the condenser, you'll go, Michael, I know what you're condenser. about. This one here is another form of condenser. It's known as a worm tub, but I'll tell you, there are no worms in it. Worm no tub. worms in it. It's just another form of condenser. And then, just through that gap there that you can see, the brother, it's another rusty, crusty condenser. That's the second one. Meanwhile, out here, the main action that happens is we get the high tech wheelbarrows, fill it full of paint, and shove it in the fire. So follow <laughs> me down, and I'll tell you what happens. <laughs> Sir, mm. madam. Thanks. Sir, so, mm. so you can appreciate it. Thank you. Sir, a little touch and a little feel and a little smell. Are we all in? You okay? Yep. So here we are down at the next stage. We have come down the floor. The barley that we were talking about that was uh, ready for malting, that toasting process, has gone above us and has been delivered onto the malt bed. Now the malt bed is at a floor above us here. So right here we have the fire and we have the kiln. The fire will supply the, the heat into the kiln and the heat will go through that malt bed. It's a room 40 feet by 40 feet with a grated floor and the heat and the smoke will go through and do that toasting process for us. Just like any other traditional fire, paper and wood and we put our dry peat on it. The dry peat burns just like coal. It's combustible, it burns really well. And once it's taken, 
we can now put our wet peat on there. So we put our wet peat on, and when we put the wet peat on, just like putting wet uh, cardboard onto a fire or paper, you get that smokiness, and it's smoky and flavour. That's what we're after, that peaty smell, going through that toasting process to give it that peaty flavour. So we make the fire six hours. We're burning that fire, stuffing the peat on there. Six hours, and then we turn this off. We extinguish it, and we put the hairdryer back on. Woo! 30 hours, 36 hours in duration. And then we move on to our long roll. Long roll is our peated whiskey. 48 hours for the process. So, we make the fire, just like a traditional fire. Put the dry peat on, get it going. Wet peat, wet peat. Dry peat, wet peat, dry peat, wet peat, wet peat, <laughs> wet peat. Bit more wet peat, dry peat. 48 hours, 70 wheelbarrows. <clears throat> is going in there per shift. Are we all here? Yeah. You okay? So here we are on the other side of the kiln. Um, this big black thing here, this is a recirculating fan. We talked about the hairdryer. Ooh, if we left the hairdryer doing its own thing, it would just keep going to the same spot and it would burn the mold, set it on fire potentially. So what you need to do is control and distribute the airflow from down below. This is what this is. It's called a recirculating fan. Here we are on the other end of the uh, bin room. Ten bins as you can see. Uh, this is Springbank's computer. Uh, it's, going to, uh, it's going to be an iPad when it grows up. Uh, the 10 bins, as we've just stated, the indications whether they take indications of the full or if they're empty, we also use a half value as well. Um, down the left hand side, you see KK. We've actually finished production here for now. Uh, as of yesterday, we did the last distillation. And so we're moving into Kilkerran, which means we're going over to Glengal Distillery. This team of uh, Stillman that do all the distilling over at Glengal. So we've stopped production for a little while here while we do some uh, Glengal stroke Kilkerran whiskey. So we're going to draw the malt out of the bins. First of all, we start the motor that turns this belt, that will in turn turn a screw. This screw is called a cross screw or an Archimedes screw. It is the full length of this room, and it enables the malt to be traversed from the bin down to the centre line. This centre line will take it to the uh, to the belt. <laughs> Uh, ours is 75 years old, uh, it's made in Northern England, in Leeds, and uh, the problem with it was that when Portia started the equipment, they were so well made that they never needed repair or maintenance. So unfortunately, once everybody had bought one, the company went broke, they went bust, because they never needed the maintenance, they never needed uh, repair. And as I said, ours is uh, 75 years old and still going strong. The top set of rollers will break down what's known as the husk. The lower set will break down what's known as the middles and the flower. And I'll show you what we've got, it's just behind you sir. What we'll end up with is a new term which is grist. This is grist. Show you, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. It's just like porridge. Yeah. <laughs> just like porridge. Grist. So what we've done is we've broke it all down. Now the ratio. Most distilleries, well, all distilleries in Scotland should be a ratio of 20, 70, 10. 20, 70, 10, what do I mean? 20% husk, 70% middles, 10% flour. Up you go, go and have a look. Go and have a look. So, it's not that interesting, it's just like a big cast iron tub. <laughs> <laughs> but what is interesting is ours only has one arm. We've got a one arm mash tub. Um, <laughs> it kind of does a front crop, but we'll come to that. But our mash tun again, because we've just gone out of production, this is one of the few times that you'll see all the plates up as well, so you see it in its nudity really, or nakedness. How many employees do you have for this operation? Throughout the three businesses, uh, there is 85 staff. Within Springbank, there are around 40. There's a little chute that comes down there. They shovel it all down the chute and it goes into the trailer and the trailer takes it away. The local farmer, we've got an agreement with him. Again, we talk about recycling. So they take it away and they feed it to the cattle and the sheep and they love it. They call it Springbank chocolate. I've tried it, it tastes nothing much. No. Now, at the moment, we have stopped production, but will that stop me telling you about fermentation? No, it will not. So, um, what we've got here is our Scandinavian bone skin large wash bags. Um, the oldest one is approximately 45 years old, the youngest is 5 years old over there. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring through that 21,000 litres that we took out of the mash tun. It's all going to come through here. It was cold water, we've cooled it down, we've put it into the wash bags, and it's now changing its name yet again to wash. <laughs> down here, we have got two holding tanks, faint and low wines. Um, we will just call them holding tanks. 
These two beauties here are known as stills. We will call them stills. Inside, you have an elemental coil uh, made of copper that kicks out the steam and does this distillation, but we'll come to that. But the third uh, still, the biggest still, is the wash still. This is the biggest and most robust. It must be the biggest and most robust because it does the hardest work. It takes that Guinness like substance that we start with and it first gets fired into here. Now, our wash still is pre 1940. We know that because it was only in the 1940s that they developed the technique of welding with the copper. Ours is all riveted, that gives us an yeah. indication that it's pre 1940. And then we move on to spring bank. Two and a half times distilled. Two and a half, I hear you say. That's what I said to the bosses. What happens when they say two and a half? They said, just tell them it's a recipe. I said, I will, I'll tell them it's a recipe. <laughs> I said, but why? They said, just tell them it's a recipe. Anyway, how it works. From the wash bags to the wash charger. The wash charger is a red tank. It comes down, it goes into the wash still. Flamey, flamey here from the bottom. Flamey, flamey up the bottom, from the bottom, and then into the wash still. Steamy, steamy vapor, vapor over the top, outside to the rusty, crusty condenser. Rusty, crusty condenser, remember that one, the rusty one? Then it comes down in a liquid form to the low wide receiver, which is the holding vat behind the uh, spirit safe. At that point, we hold some of it back. The rest will go off a second distillation to the low wide charger, which is a blue tank. Comes from the blue tank into still number one, same again, steamy, steamy, vapor, vapor, off it goes, over the top of the line out, down to the worm tub with no, no worms in it, no worms in that one, man. And then down it comes to the face receiver, which is the second holding tank there. And then it's coming up for a third distillation. Now at this point, everything that we had left in the first one will be brought along for the ride. So some of it will be going in for second distillation, some of it will be going in for third distillation. And when it all goes into still number two, it will go up again, steamy, steamy, vapor, vapor, out to the second rusty crusty condenser and then down in the liquid form to the spirit receiver via the spirit safe that's not on there and that's how it works that's our spring bank recipe any questions <laughs> let's move over to the spirit safe <laughs> <laughs> so spirit safe shiny shiny <laughs> from the Guinness-like stuff that we started with. Meanwhile, while that's going round, I'll talk to you about the Spirit Safe. Spirit Safe, this is where all the magic happens. A little bit about the Spirit Safe before we move on. This was made by a local man, uh, Robert Arbor. Arbors are still in the town. There's a lot of them. They've been here for a long, long time. Uh, they were the local copper plumbers and coppersmiths. Um, this gentleman started his business in 1811. And unfortunately, when I tried to find out the age statement for this spirit safe, <laughs> I looked at Robert Armour. They found the first six years of his business, 1811 to 1817. So I thought, oh, I'm on a good idea, I'm going to find it. But unfortunately, he handed his business down to his eldest son, called Robert Armour. He handed it down to his son, called Robert Armour. <laughs> he handed it down to his son, nothing you wouldn't guess. Another Robert. So now I've got 120 years to try and find it. So it was a waste of my time and everybody's time that I've tried to. Fine. What happens in the spirit state? First and foremost, this shows you that you've got continuity of distillation. When they're in that cycle, up and down, up and down, spirit will come through here. All it shows you is that you've got a back pressure, you've got continuity of distillation, the spirit will run down. This is just because I have to explain because I got another question last month. They said, Are you making just a one pot? I thought we were about. I said, That pot there is just making the one pot. I said, No, really like loads of it. Oh, what happens is it goes down there and goes out the back. So, it's just like a pipe, with the spirit running through it, all we've done is cut the pipe in half, so that the spirit runs out, out the open pipe, down the hole. Just like a drain. But it's showing us that we've got continuity and distillation. If that stops, then there's a back pressure or a blockage somewhere, they cool it all down and go and investigate what's going on. Then we come to the second part. The second part is the test equipment. The team here, it's not done on micro switches, it's all done uh, using the recipes. No pen and paper, they're in and out, in and out, in and out all the time. Um, and so this is what they're doing. They can draw a sample off, take a, a sample, and that's what they're doing now. Then we move down to the second or the third uh, section. The third section has got three pots. These are the pots of magic. Self-named self pots of magic. So we have got the heads, the hearts, and the tails. 
This is where, on the final distillation, this is where we're going to take our spirit Delicious. away. This is what's going to eventually become our whiskey. What we're going to take away it's is the big town. In the case of spirit, like uh, some kind of, some of, some kind of candy. Um, That's what we're going to take away. Sweet, because when you first try to do a final distillation, the first 45 minutes is toxic. It's not better than that. It's not better than that. So we're watching them down. The team are watching them. They're watching them. You can have some more if you want. Move the pot along with your wood to the heart. Now, if you bring my YouTube videos, you can't read it. On you go, you can zoom in as well, I'll put my stuff away. Can we talk about the, the new bit? Where's the Glasgow? Oh, it's here. You want it? <laughs> so, just about a little bit. He said, said, when I first came here, he said, you need to try it, it's beautiful. I said, do you know what, I will. When I tasted it, I was expecting it to be a bit, whoa, cheeky. It's like, huh, huh. It's not too bad, it is a bit cheeky, but what I wasn't expecting, and for those that had a little taste, is that sweetness that you yeah. still have in your mouth right now. Yeah. It's so farmy, so architect. Yeah. Space. Space between. Rather than going to each cask in detail, I'm just going to use the two main casks that we use, which is our bourbon and our cherry cask. Uh, our bourbon casks come from America, from the bourbon industry. Uh, for those that are deep uh, educated in the law of America, they will know that um, what happens with the bourbon cask, you can only use it once. When you decant it, you have to get rid of it. You can't use it again. So they have to use virgin casks every time that they fill with their bourbon. That lends itself beautifully to the Scottish whiskey industry because we will take those bourbon casks and bring them over here. They cost us approximately 80 to 100 pounds each. And uh, when they come, they are fully formed and they are ready to rock. They have a residual amount of uh, bourbon in there that I've yet to see any of. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's then ready to go, like I say, 80 to 100 pounds. Then we've got the sherry cast, that's our second style and the most popular. The sherry cast is much more expensive, 800 to 1,000 pounds. I'd just like to say I have brought you a little bourbon. All right, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Too much of a gentleman to refuse, I'll <laughs> <laughs> Roll it in. Lift it in, put it in, go to the petrol station. Click, 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 tick, 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 tick. The guy in the hut is taking the measurement for customs. You're on the filling head, you shout, 197, it's 197, and he writes it down. You take it out, you put it back in there, you always give it a tap. How old's that jug? <laughs> How, how old is it? <laughs> yeah. I have no way to do it. I'll tell you what, there's no any That looks... Try as a Serengeti sandal leather, that. Hello! <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! Uh, <laughs> a drop in there. <laughs> yeah, just find the door. Come on, dude. Yeah, I remember you. I thought I had to, you know. And then I thought, did I do a tasting for you? Wow. Yeah, it's a, I think the best one. It's a real Dunnage warehouse, isn't it? So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to warehouse number three. We have eight <laughs> warehouses on site. Uh, six of which are like this, known as a Dunnage warehouse. A Dunnage warehouse, you would never go higher than three casts high. So they're all quite low. Three casts. Also, you get a concrete centre line, whereas I myself have stood on Campbelltown soil. There's no concrete subfloor two, uh, two feet down, it's just Campbelltown soil. Um, to stop the cast from deteriorating, we put these staves in, the full length there. Uh, these staves are known as duns, hence the dunnage. That's the six that we have on site. We have two further warehouses known as rack warehouses, where they are multiple levels high, multiple levels across. So that's the eight covered. Um, We've come in to talk about, uh, oh no, before I do that, how many casts have we got? 14,000 casts on site, uh, thereabouts. We don't keep our casts off site anywhere in the warehouse. Um, it's all here. Like I say, 14,000 sounds quite a lot, but if you compare that to the likes of uh, Diageo, Alawa, they've got six million. You can do a tour of a day in a golf club looking around at the cast. I don't know how interesting <laughs> that will be, but hey ho. So, we're moving on. We're ready for maturation. 
Maturation 63.5 going in there, as we said. Once we put the spirit in there, then everything that was in this cask before, in this case sherry, is now going to impart itself by colour, by flavour, into that sweet spirit that we were tasting. It's got to do three years, one day, in the cask in order to be called whiskey. It's got to be above 40% ABV in order to be a whiskey, and that's pretty easy to achieve. So, the first two to three years when we introduce the spirit in here, we will get a maturation spike. At three years, it starts to dissipate, three years there or thereabouts, it starts to dissipate, it still continues to mature, but it slows down. Then it's up to the people with the callers and the directors to decide at what point your maturation is complete, whether it be 10 years, 15 years, 18 years, 20, 25, whatever. It's up to them because you're going to get losses. I've done a lot of talking. Uh, let's go back and we'll talk a little bit more and we'll finish off. <laughs> but because the walls are like three feet thick, we couldn't get a signal, so he's on his phone saying, Help, help! And they said, It's alright, just keep pouring your whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a taste. It's good to have done this these are new pops. This is Hazel Burn, the triple distilled. No. Go on, have a sip. Just have a sip. <laughs> okay, you can give it back to deeper now. <laughs> yeah, rum cask finish can be used. It's normally a final step, but or a small percentage of the mix might be rum. I can tell you okay, that, like, that green bottle on the top shelf. Uh, I'll be down there if you want to ask me any further questions. If you just uh, want to chat. No. Oh, right, yeah. It's time for me to pour you something, right, if I'll that's okay. To, I'll have to put it in the pot. <laughs> <laughs> you keep it for later. <laughs> oh, we might struggle here. <laughs> Yesterday was the Right, I'll make it. Do you reckon? It pours fairly, fairly clean. That's steady hand. I've been taking this all around, all around Isla in places. I just need to save enough to get to spring back and need a little bit for the Caden head That's me. I'm good. Thank you so much. Right, everybody look away. No, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I need to take that later. Thank you can have a nose of the bottle. Well, that's good gear. That's good gear. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'll be leaving this at the warehouse tasting, so if you want some more, you can hey, you, If Donald's not feeling better, you may be seeing me again. I might be doing the warehouse tasting. <laughs> that's perfect. Yeah, he's well, not so good today. So. This, this will be for you. Thank you so much. <laughs> right, thank you. Thank you. Cheers. 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 Cheers.